Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's and morning prayer on this fifth day of February on uh, Friday. Today we are going to celebrate the lives of two prophetic witnesses in colonial New England. Uh, Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson, and we'll hear their stories during the service. We begin morning prayer right one on page 42 of the prayer book. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the Invitatory Psalm. This morning we will read together the Jubilate, found on page 45. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. We continue with the psalm appointed for today. That is Psalm 133, which can be found on page 787 of the prayer book. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. We continue with the gospel assigned for today. It comes to us from the ninth chapter of Luke's Gospel, beginning at the 51st verse. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, First, let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. We continue with Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, begins on page 93 of the prayer book. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Born in London in the year 1603, Roger Williams was ordained and served as a priest in the Church of England. Williams found that he could not abide by the rigorous high church policies of Archbishop William Laud, and in 1630 he sailed to New England in search of religious liberty. Upon his arrival in Boston, Williams encountered further obstacles to religious freedom. In particular, Williams objected to the ability of the civil authorities to punish religious offenses, 
and he advocated for a wall of separation between civil and religious powers. He believed also in the fundamental right of all people to follow their consciences in matter, in matter of religious belief. He left Massachusetts and founded a nearby settlement called Providence, believing God had guided him to this new land. He was eventually granted a charter for the colony of Rhode Island, the new constitution of which granted wide religious latitude and freedom of practice. Williams founded the First Baptist Church in Providence, though he refused to be tied to the tenets of an established church. Like Roger Williams, Anne Hutchinson also immigrated to Massachusetts in hope of finding religious freedom. She was an outspoken advocate of the rights and equality of women, challenging the dominant views of the Puritan leadership. She held Bible studies in her home for the women of her community, at which she welcomed critical examination of the faith. As a result of her activities, she found herself at odds with not only the religious authorities, but with the state civil authorities as well. And in the year 1638, she was tried by the General Court of Massachusetts, presided over by Governor John Winthrop, and was branded as a dangerous dissenter and brandished and banished from the colony. Anne eventually relocated to what is now Bronx, New York, where she and her family were killed, save one daughter, by a group of Suwane Su Su Indians in the year 1643. Today, both Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson are remembered as early champions of religious liberty in this nation and as prophets of the individual's freedom of fellowship with the, their creator. There you have the lives of Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson. We continue our service by affirming our faith by reciting together the Apostles' Creed, which begins on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. We begin with the Lord's Prayer, followed by suffrages B. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. We continue with the collect, beginning with the collect for Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson. O oh God, our light and salvation, we offer thanks for Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson, whose visions of the liberty of the soul illumined by the light of Christ made them brave prophets of religious tolerance in the American colonies. And we pray that we may also follow paths of holiness and good conscience, guided by the radiance of Jesus Christ, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we continue with the Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, 
mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. Take a moment to offer our prayers and thanksgivings. We give thanks for this week so far. We give thanks for the blessings that you've given us, the blessings of friendship, the blessings of those who have contributed to our lives out of their generosity. We give thanks for all those we love. We give thanks for the people that we've met along the way that have made our life meaningful. We pray for all those facing any affliction or sickness. Give thanks for our first responders, for those who serve our country and uh, our government, elected office. We pray especially for the leaders of our country to make wise decisions. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus and that many may receive vaccines in a timely basis. We pray for the leaders of the nations of the world. Take a moment to ask for your prayers and thanksgivings. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside deep in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our prayers by saying together a prayer of St. Christostom, found on page 59. Mighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. I look forward to, uh, <clears throat> to uh, seeing you perhaps on this Sunday as we live stream our services at 10 o'clock each Sunday and for joining you again next week for morning prayer. Take care and God bless.